Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next base destruction video, and we will get into the action in just a moment, but first I have to talk about the last video I uploaded, and uh, as soon as I uploaded it, I found out that Supercell had just banned a bunch of people for using third-party software, and it was a permanent ban this time, so pretty serious stuff, and uh, in that video, uh, I had talked about a big group of people uh, leaving Genesis to go back to Reddit Legacy for the most part, not all of them, but most of them, and a lot of people thought that was kind of a cover-up for uh, them really being modders and them using third-party software and getting banned, so that was kind of our cover-up uh, to hide the real truth, and maybe I'm kind of a sucker for addressing this, but because I know some people are just giving Genesis a hard time just to kind of troll or whatever. But uh, for people who are legitimately curious or suspicious as to what happened, basically a few things. First of all, uh, the people that left, left on Sunday after the arranged war. Now, I didn't upload the video talking about them leaving and the recruitment details for Genesis. I didn't upload that video until uh, today. So this is three days later. But uh, because of the timing of the video, people kind of assumed that's when they left. But in reality, they had left a few days earlier before the bans even came out. And second of all, if you go to Reddit Legacy, you can see probably 9 out of 10 of the, Ge of the Genesis members who left, I think, went to Reddit Legacy. So you can see that they're still in a clan uh, donating, doing stuff that would... Uh, require you to have access to your account to do. So I wanted to talk about that real quick. Uh, sorry if I'm kind of wasting time here because that's not. I don't think anyone was legitimately, uh, for the most part, that suspicious. But people do say things in the comments, and I felt kind of uh, it was my job to address this. Uh, when I can in a video. So anyway, besides that, let's get into the base destruction video for today. And you guys probably um, are tired of seeing this base on the channel, but I'm going to do it one last time just so you guys who see this base in war a bunch because I know it's so popular, just so you guys are crystal clear on how to three-star it because we've seen fails on it, we've seen success, but in this video, let's talk about everything that kind of uh, goes into taking out this base. Taking a look at it, you can use m many strategies on it, but Valks are the go-to, and really, why would you use any other strategy? Because um, Valks are by far the most reliable for this base. You can't really use bowlers because the, the, bowler, it, the bowler is probably the most difficult troop to predict as far as pathing goes in the game, the most difficult troop to funnel. So with the base this wide open, uh, there's so many possibilities of where your bowlers could go besides the core. So it doesn't seem quite worth it to uh, to take the risk, I guess is what I'm saying. And also for miners, there's just the buildings are so tight together. Miners actually aren't that effective because there's so much HP around the core that the defenses are pretty well protected. So Valks are going to be your go-to. The buildings are touching. Uh, as long as you can get them into the core, you have a good shot at the three-star. So there's two things that you need to do uh, when attacking the space with Valks. The first thing is create a funnel to get your Valks into the core of the base. And enough Valks to actually take out the core. Sometimes they get in there, but they die off. But enough Valks and the right spell placement to get in there, get the core taken out with your Valks. The second thing you need is a queen with her healers still on her that can survive to the end of the attack. So you want to do a short queen, uh, some kind of queen walk or queen charge or something that doesn't require a lot of spells, but it will get in there. And for example, if you're attacking the base from this side with your Valks coming in like that, um, you ha you want to probably enter your queen either in that compartment or that compartment. Let her take out some of these buildings to create a funnel. And then on the other side, you can, let's say your queen comes in on this side. Other side, bring something else to take out the funnel here. So break the funnel on each side and send your Valks right up the middle or wherever you're coming from and get them into the core. But you want the queen to survive long enough to the point where after she does her job here, she'll just walk to some place in the base and continue taking out defenses because once the core goes down, the defenses are so spread out, especially the point defense if you just look at it, that you don't have too much of a, you're not gonna have too much of a problem as long as you have a few Valks left up and your queen and most of her healers because she is very effective in the late end game attack. She can take out quite a few buildings and go for a long time as long as she doesn't take too much damage. So uh, we're going to take a look at a bunch of attacks on this base. It actually ate up four attacks uh, all by our Town Hall 10s and 11s if you can believe that. So we're not quite uh, 
at the level where we're taking out the space consistently, but hopefully you guys can be after watching this video. So we'll take a look at all four of those attacks at the same time. I know in some base destruction videos, I kind of go back and forth between this screen and notifications, uh, between this screen and the uh, actual attacks, but today we're just going to look at each attack as it happens because honestly there's not a whole lot of... Uh, of planning I need to talk about because they're just different ways to take on the, the base but they're all going for the same objective which is to get stuff funneled into the core get it taken out and then have something left over for the end game to take out the rest of the shell of the base so let's go ahead and get into the first attack and see what the first attacker uh, was trying to do to this base so Mr. Alec was the first attacker and you can see here he has five healers cooked up along with a Valk army. So he's doing kind of what I usually do on this base too when you guys watch my live attacks because I've done so many live attacks on this base is he's coming in here with the queen to break the funnel. You can see baby dragon and uh, balloons in the CC and I probably should have mentioned that the Teslas are all in the core but I think those of you guys who are familiar with this base already know that. So anyway the CC troops come out, the queen engages those, uh, the poisons are going to slow down the balloons quite a bit she is taking damage from two point defense plus the wizard tower for what it's worth uh, right there the next few point defense lock on gets that ability just in time that was like super close drops the rage too which is definitely needed because uh, the ability wears off pretty quickly and his queen's going to be up for a little while longer you can see the king going in on the other side with the wall breakers has the valks to open that part of the base up and the only problem here is that the there's nothing to let the valks and the king into that next layer of the base uh you can see that the giants go down. I think they're supposed to go in with the Valks, but everything was just too late here. And the queen goes down because she, had, I think, already beat through one of those walls. Or Yeah, she already went through one of the walls. So part of the problem with this attack is you have to move quickly and you have to be able to do multiple things at once because uh, he wasted way too much time so both sides of the funnel went down now the funnel was created for the most part but besides that um, he only has the Valks and the Giants really left up uh, that freeze was pretty late um, so the Valks are getting targeted by the Inferno for most of the time they're in the core but right there uh, finally the Inferno is frozen up that being said he's lost a lot of Valks because the spell placement wasn't the best and he doesn't have his Queen which is almost a deal breaker for some of these attacks in the end game you need that queen uh, the healers do go off onto the Valks but still that's not as effective as a queen with the healers on her because uh, she's she's able to snipe defenses more effectively where the Valks just kind of all run around a little bit brainless so anyway uh, the, the healers also get in range of the air defense which is another thing that, that's going to be an issue has a few balloons and he actually deployed a few hogs so he had some stuff for the back end of this base and i think he would have crushed it pretty easily had the everything gone in at the same time had the uh the valks moved in before the queen was targeted by the multi inferno but unfortunately, he just kind of moved too slowly. We'll go ahead and fast forward to the end here. And I think another problem was he had to wait for a while because the right side of the base at 3 o'clock, that part of the funnel couldn't be created for a while because the Valks and the King had to beat through that second layer of the wall. So we'll take a look at... I probably shouldn't have gone, down, gone out, but whatever. We'll take a look at the next attack and see what that attacker did. So Jackson attacks this base with a mass bowler composition and you'll see that it just doesn't quite the, the troops just don't quite go where they need to go and that's part of the problem uh, he tried to wall breaker the queen in you'll see this on a few different attacks that the the queen can be difficult uh, to get into that corner compartment because the army camp is so big that once it goes down there's not a whole lot pulling the queen in because everything else is pretty far back into that compartment so the queen doesn't go into that first compartment to start you can see he also dropped down the bowlers and some wall breakers so he was trying to create the funnel by entering each compartment but the the bowlers are really difficult to funnel in as well so neither the queen or the bowlers actually they do end up going back into that compartment but the queen didn't so the, the left part of the funnel isn't created. The top is going to be kind of created. Uh, they're not going to take out all the buildings, but they'll get some of them. Here comes the main force of bowlers. Uh, the healers luckily kind of go off onto the bowlers. And uh, right here has the freeze, which uh, pretty good placement. It'll uh, allow those bowlers to get healed back up for a little while. But the main problem is even if the bowlers... Uh, approach the core like they do right there they don't really go into it they just kind of walk around and uh, the few that did go into it got roasted pretty bad uh, the the main 
or not the main group, but the big group of bowlers that has like five or six uh, is still kind of making their way through the outskirts of the base. So really nothing goes in in any kind of force. And uh, because this core has so much uh, high value defenses, you really have to go in strong. And the bowlers just don't quite do that as well. They don't stay in the in the big group as well as they should in a base that's this spread out. So Valks are typically going to be the go-to. They're a lot easier to predict the pathing. I know that's kind of crazy to say that Valks are easy to predict the pathing, but compared to bowlers, I actually think that's true uh, because you can kind of guess where a Valk is going to go. With a bowler, it's a little bit more difficult. So uh, let's take a look at the next attack and see what the plan was. Okay, guess who? It's Bisectatron taken on this next base and uh, you can see he has another uh, similar army to the first attacker uh, goes, he goes ahead and drops down the minions on the uh, dark elixir fact or not the the dark spell factory that is uh, to try to get the funnel or the queen I can't even talk tonight again to try to get the queen to funnel into that top compartment the wall breakers are too late though and that cannon goes down a split second early the queen instead of targeting the archer tower gets really weird and targets the uh, the wizard tower for some reason that was kind of an interesting little move she made because uh, it wasn't the closest building and because she just thrust herself into range of all that point defense uh, he had to drop that rage which probably was going to be intended for the Valks uh, for the core to help them take that out but because of the uh, the mix up with the queen now she had to use the rage plus she's going to go on that wall so the rage is going to wear off um, at this point he's kind of improvising this wasn't the plan I don't think uh, but he's going to drop down his golem and the wizard on the bottom here, just kind of in a panic. The queen goes down, so there's pretty much no chance of a funnel at this point. Uh, everything just kind of being spammed in. That jump spell that was supposed to just be for the king and the 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 golem and a few valks for the funnel ends up being used on all the valks. And the CC troops are still up. Nothing can even target air troops uh, that's left up for his troops. So it's pretty much GG at this point. And uh, his troops will just run around for a little while before they go down. So a uh, nice try to bisect the Tron. I don't think that was... Uh, it, it was, The plan was okay, but just as soon as the Queen Walk fell apart, everything kind of fell apart. So uh, keep your head up, dude. Uh, it gets better. But let's take a look at... I don't know why I backed out again. Let's take a look at the uh, the last attack that got the three star and a creative way to do it. Something that I actually haven't seen on this base. It's pretty similar to most of the plans that uh, I've tried and that other people have tried, but it's a little bit of a variation that makes it a lot easier to uh, plan out and to deploy your troops. So let's take a look at that attack. Okay, so the three star goes to Black Ice and you can notice he has a lot more Valks trained up than anyone else did. Uh, goes ahead and wall breakers in at the beginning there. Drops down a few, I think, to test. And uh, he, it requires him bringing a few extra wall breakers. But he makes sure it's wide open before he deploys a single troop. Um, takes up a little more troop space, but definitely worth it. And I like how he used the bowlers behind the king. Because the bowlers can... Uh, reach the second layer of buildings without having to actually go through that wall so they can create the funnel uh, without having to advance the king actually does beat his way through the wall and then he drops down the queen delayed that way he doesn't even need to lure out the cc troops because the the other part of the kill squad accomplishes that so a little bit gutsy to let his king go down so early but honestly, the king isn't that necessary to take out the core or for cleanup at the end. So the king is expendable in that sense. Drops down the rage on the queen and the healers. Goes ahead and does a double poison. So the CC troops won't be much of a threat. And you can see right here, the funnel has already been created. Not the best funnel, but it's functional. And the deployment is so much easier. Drops in all 20 of his Valks. The jump spells down, has the rage, and uh, doesn't even use a freeze because they move through so fast that uh, the freeze would have just been wasted because the infernos go down uh, well before the freeze would even have worn off. So not not even needed. Uh, you can see how quickly the Valks move through the base. Uh, they could probably take out most of the base on their own, but uh, as usual, the queen is going to be needed to take out kind of the the shell of the base or at least most of it because the valks get caught on walls pretty quickly and start to go down so the queen finally beats her way through actually a good thing that she got stuck on the wall for a while because it allowed everything to go down so by the time she emerges uh, the base is very manageable has the ability as well in case he needs it and it's true that the queen and her healers will probably trigger a number of seeking air mines as they move through the base because they're they're bound to be somewhere by those air defenses. But 
especially with the queen's ability uh, it's not going to be that much of an issue and you can see that uh, yeah a few traps hit the healers but by this point valks are tanking the queen's at full health anyway uh, she can afford to take some damage before she even gets low on health and has the ability as well when he needs it so uh, pretty much everything has gone down but the queen is still up with the with that wizard and they'll take out the last few buildings awesome attack to black ice you can see he did a few important things first he went ahead and wall breakered things open before he actually dropped the corresponding troops makes it easier and that's one thing i could have done because the wall breakers were so late that my queen actually didn't enter the compartment like she would have if I wall breakered in earlier. So that's one thing. Also, the king to tank for the bowlers is effective because the bowlers can reach deeper into the base and create the funnel without having to actually get into that next layer of the base. And finally, he used the uh, king and the bowlers before the queen. That way, the queen was a little easier to manage. You didn't have to go back and forth trying to do multiple things at once. And uh, that way, you can deploy your main group of Valks right after the queen does her job. Uh, so you know the queen will be protected as she gets stuck on the wall. The Valks clear out the entire core of the base. Doesn't even need a freeze because there's so many of them. And the queen, when she emerges from her little pod in the corner, uh, the base is ripe for cleanup. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video. And uh, this will be the last time you probably see this base on my channel, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. So uh, make sure that you're, you're ready for when you see this base in war for those of you Town Hall 10s out there. And I'm sure you guys will crush it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Sectatron out.